Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Sorry for the irregular uploads, life is a bit funky sometimes and sometimes I don't really have anything to show, sometimes I don't really have time to film and sometimes I just lack inspiration. But I'm here now because um, this orchid has forced inspiration upon me. As you can see it's not looking so good. And this is the Phanopsis venosa. I got it from the Orchidarium quite a while ago now. And it has never really been able to properly adapt to my environment. I started out in Lekka, as I do so many of my Phanopsis. And almost all my Phanopsis do really well in Lekka, but this one just didn't. It had a great root system when I put it in, and all of it died and it did not properly recover. So I feel really bad about what I've done to this orchid. It, it used to be a very beautiful, splendid orchid, and well, it doesn't look like that now. Um, ever since it lost its roots, I had put it in Synthic. And that went a lot better. And you can see that it is now regrowing new roots. So it was on the road to recovery. You can see this, this leaf is tiny and it really had a bad time. But it was slowly recovering and this leaf is already twice the size of the previous leaf. So it really was on the right track. But now, suddenly, as you have obviously noted so far, I have these weird splotches on the leaves. Now this was not here when I watered the plant a week ago, I'm sure of it. I inspected the plant and there was nothing strange there. So this has cropped up over the last few days and I'm not quite sure what it is. A lot of people have told me that it might be sunburn, but I don't really think it is because where it is, it's in a little terrarium. Um, I'll show it to you. So basically I leave it in this little terrarium over here. And if you look at where it is with relation to the window, you know, there is a window there, but this is a southwestern window. So for the sun to actually fall directly onto that terrarium, it would need to be somewhere in the north. And obviously there's no sun in the north. So, and I've also never ever seen direct sunlight fall upon this part of the room. So I'm pretty sure that it's not actually sunburn. So I wonder what else it could be. I wonder if it's heat stress, because obviously in a terrarium, I have it in there for the increased humidity, but there's also less airflow. And it has been quite warm the last few days. Like we've had um, 30 degrees in the apartment for the last two, three days in the afternoons. And I'm wondering where maybe it was heat damage, because with the decreased ventilation, it is more prone to that. But I'm so sure it cannot be sunburn specifically. One thing that I worry it might be is some sort of bacterial rot. And I know I've read that bacterial rot can spread very quickly in Phalaenopsis and sometimes kill a plant in two to three days, which would kind of fit with the incredibly rapid development this must have had. Because like I said, a week ago, there was no sign of any of this. And suddenly you have these giant splotches when I checked today. So not even a week ago, I think five days ago I checked it. Um, so both heat damage, I think, can also crop up quite suddenly. Um, but the bacterial rot is also a possibility and a pretty scary one. So I have asked several people online for their advice and what they think I should do. And beyond the sunburn suggestions that I got from everyone, um, a lot of people also said bacterial or fungal infection. Now this is very general, of course, it's not overtly helpful, but it does possibly suggest that if I cut off the infected parts, um, the infection will stop spreading. However, I'm not sure how true that is. I think I might need to get something systematic because as you can see, it's on a lot of leaves. You have this main leaf here and you have some on the small leaf here. You have some here and also over there. Um, and those are literally all the leaves. So the only leaf that's unaffected is the very newest one. And I feel like if it's all over the plant, it's probably systemic rather than just one place that got infected, right? Because what's the chance of all of these spots getting infected individually instead of it being a systemic issue? However, I will start by cutting off the infected parts because as you can see also you have this kind of dark advancing ring. And here you can see it better. And I think that's very often a sign of spread. And that is not good, right? We don't want this to spread to the crown and we don't want it to spread to the last good leaf. So I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to try and remove all of this and then hopefully, fingers crossed, that will be sufficient because this orchid is in such a bad state and it was finally recovering 
And if I have to remove all these leaves except for the newest one, it's going to take so much longer for this to recover. And that's barring systemic um, fungicides and bactericides. So without further ado, let's get ready for some cutting. I just went back and checked my posts where I asked for help and some clarification again. And there are now more and more people saying that it is probably a bacterial infection, which would make sense with how quickly this suddenly cropped up over the last few days. Um, one person clarified that with sunburn, they don't necessarily mean actual sunburn, they mean heat damage, which um, is of course a very similar kind of mechanism, if not almost the same. Um, so she suggested what probably happens, I got too warm in a terrarium and that that damaged the leaves and then that gave the opportunity for the bacteria to set in and begin um, advancing through the leaf. So in either way, the treatment is the same. I need to cut off these infected parts and hopefully that will take care of everything. So I have my scissors here and I have a lighter. Now the lighter is to sterilize the scissors. After every single cut, I'm going to want to sterilize the scissors to try and ensure that I don't transfer any bacteria into a new part of the leaf with a unclean cut. So we're going to start by sterilizing these scissors. Now, if of course you, please, please be sensible when you do this, fire is hot, it burns. So I'm just gonna go like this. There we go. And remember guys, fire goes up. So don't do it like this, huh? you'll burn your thumb. Hold it like this if you wanna keep it at an angle. Just be mindful of how fire and heat moves. So I've sterilized my scissors and I'm going to make the first cut over here. Now you see the advancing, let me zoom in a bit. You can see the advancing line here, kind of like the, the darker green. I'm going to cut under that because there's a good chance that there's still some bacteria in the dark green regions. So there we go. And that's cut number one. One leaf off. So now I'm going to sterilize my scissors again for the next cut. Again, be mindful of how fire and heat moves. Also, as you can see, when you um, sterilize via flame, often your scissors will start to look like this. So don't do this with nice scissors. You know, take, get some scissors you don't really care about. Um, so let's move on to the next big leaf. Actually, let's start with a tiny one because that's kind of in the way of the big leaf. Unfortunately, it puts so much effort into growing this tiny leaf, but it needs to go. So another one gone. And then we once again sterilize our scissors. This is really important, guys, because if you skip this step, all of this might be in vain and you might be cutting again a little bit later. And I am so thankful that I checked my plan today because perhaps if I had left it in our day or two, and this really is bacterial, if this really is bacterial world, right? If I'd left it in our day or two, then quite possibly there would have been no plant left to save because this can spread very quickly. It can be very aggressive. So here, unfortunately, you can see that this is all clean, but I can't get rid of this without getting rid of the clean area. So I'm just going to have to cut close to the stem. There you go. And you can see it's a little bit close, but I really made sure to cut underneath the dark regions. I'm not sure what the dark regions are. I think it's liquefied tissue, but I, I'm really, don't, don't, don't quote me on that. I'm really not sure. So once again, we will sterilize the scissors and then we'll cut the last leaf. Now the last leaf here, we can see some yellowing but I don't think that's the issue per se. So I'm going to keep as much as possible because it doesn't have that much leaf and just cut off this end. So this is what's left of the orchid, which is kind of tiny and pathetic. And I don't know how incredibly long this will take to recover now. I'm so glad it started on those two little roots down there earlier. So it has something to draw upon. Um, it at least has some way to take up nutrients and water, but it doesn't have many means of photosynthesis anymore. So we will have to see how this plant does in the future, quite possibly 
If it does survive, it will take many, many years to flower again. Um, I don't know. I have no experience with a plant that has been this mistreated. Um, so now what we need to do, we're not quite done yet, is first of all, I'm going to wash my hands. Um, but then I'm going to treat all these open wounds with cinnamon to try and prevent yet another opportunistic infection from setting in and causing secondary problems. Okay, so I have my cinnamon and I have my cotton ball and stick, which I think they're called Q-tips. I'm gonna get some cinnamon on here. And then I'm going to try and seal these wounds. Because this leaf plant is now clearly very weak. It is not healthy, it's not vigorous. So it really is at an increased um, <clears throat> risk for opportunistic infections. Now when you do this, I would try and keep an eye on how much cinnamon is spilling. Because cinnamon, the reason we're using it is because it's a desiccant. So it draws out moisture, which means that the wound will scab over much faster than it would if you did not apply cinnamon. So we're essentially forcing it to close really fast so that it doesn't have contact with the outside world anymore. But because it's a desiccant, if you get it on the roots or other parts of the leaf, it can also cause some damage. There we go. So you can see there's quite a lot of cinnamon lying around. We don't want that. So I'm just gonna blow on it and try and get rid of some of that cinnamon. Now I know it just kind of disappeared into the medium, but I'm okay with that. I just don't want it to be on the roots or on the leaf and the roots are here and I blew in the other direction. So that should be fine. So for now, this is all I'm going to do with this particular phalaenopsis. I have no idea how it will do. Um, yeah, it's the best I can think of right now. I'll give you all an update later if it uh, decides to either die or keep growing. And hopefully we'll be able to save it and it will at some point in the future flourish again. For now, I'm just, gonna, I'm just hoping it wasn't systemic. I really hope they were just spot infections. Um, I guess we'll see. So thank you all for watching and I hope you never have to deal with things like this because it's a little bit stressful. But um, if you have any suggestions for me or any questions, go ahead and leave them down below in the comment section. If you like the video, go ahead and give a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, go ahead and give the thumbs down. And if you'd like to see more videos from me in the future, go ahead and um, hit the subscribe button. I try to upload once a week, but recently I've been pretty bad at that. So it's more like once a month. Either way, if you like them, give it a try. And I'll see you all next time. Bye.